We had a lesson previously on the properties of exponents. Now we have rational exponents, but the good news is the properties didn't change. So just as we had before, if you have two values with the same base, you can add exponents. If you take a power to a power, you multiply exponents, etc. Um, so this is just a quick recap of those on properties of exponents. In addition, we did have negative exponents, which made whatever our value was a denominator, or if it was in the denominator, we turned it into a numerator. And then zero exponent means anything to the zero power is one. So this is really just some practice for us of all of those things involving some rational exponents. So here, x to the one-fifth, x to the four-fifths. Again, these are same base, so I'm going to add. So this is like x to the one-fifth plus four-fifths. x to the one-fifth plus four-fifths would be x to the five-fifths, or x to the first, which is just x. So my answer is x. Second question, I have seven x to the negative one-half over x to the four-fifths. I can think of this two different ways. One way is I know that this one-fifth is only on the x, so it's saying, hey, put that down here. So now this is gone, and I have another x to the one-fifth on the bottom, which of course would give me seven on the top, and then four-fifths plus one-fifth would give me x to the first, so my answer would be seven over x. The way that I would typically do it is I would subtract, so I would say I have a seven that doesn't reduce, and then negative one-fifth, remember when I divide, I subtract. So negative one-fifth minus four-fifths would be negative five-fifths. So negative one-fifth minus four-fifths would be a negative five-fifths. So that would give me x to the negative first, which of course would tell me that the x goes on the bottom. So a negative exponent goes to the bottom. Whichever way you think about that is just fine. And then I've got a whole mess of stuff here. Remember when I have an exponent on the outside, everything is gonna get that power. So I'm going to have three to the fourth, which I'll reduce further in a moment. And then I have x to the one half to the fourth, which means four times one half, so that would be x squared. y to the one third times four, so y to the four thirds. And then z to the three fourths times four, so that's z to the third. 3 to the 4th, of course, I would turn into 81. The rest of this, I would leave just as it is. There's really no purpose in me writing the square root, or sorry, the, the third root of y to the 4th, etc. It's just gonna make it more complicated, so I would leave it just like this. Here are a couple for you to try on your own. So the first, again, I have the same base, and when I have the same base, I'm adding exponents. So I'm adding a fourth and a half, which I, of course, would then turn that into two fourths. So that would give me x to the three fourths. Now, if I wanted to, I could say that's the fourth root of x to the third, but I would probably leave it just like that. For this one, again, I'm reducing, so I would divide the three and the six, I would reduce to one and two, just like I normally would with any fraction. With this situation, I would take negative one-fourth minus three-fourths, which would give me negative four-fourths, or negative one, which tells me that the k to the positive one would go on the bottom. So if you need to write that intermediate step, feel free to write this step in, the, in between. And then for this one, everything is to the sixth power. So one-third times six, that's six times one divided by three, a squared b to the one half, so that six times one divided by two is three. c to the five six, that's six times five divided by six, which is c to the fifth.